Hi everyone and welcome back to another quick tutorial. Um, I'm just doing a very very quick tutorial just I suppose just kind of as I'm painting it I thought why not just record it and make just a quick tutorial on it. Now this painting I painted um, for a restaurant which I have my paintings hanging in. It's just something Christmassy. Um, I want to do a couple of Christmas ones for the walls in the restaurant. Um, with Christmas coming I thought why not, do you know? So I'm going to paint just a kind of a quick tutorial or a quick lesson I suppose on a robin redbreast in snow. Um, nice cool kind of a background, okay? Nice snowy background. And um, now I have this painted already. I painted this in my kitchen. Um, because the studio was very kind of cold at the time so I thought look I set up my easel my table easel in my kitchen and I painted it there and I recorded it now the only problem is I will have to do a voice over on the video because it was just noisy in the background do you know what I mean with people coming and going so I done I recorded the video, then I went back and I done the voice over. Um, I hope it's okay, I hope you don't mind. And um, I have the painting finished behind me here, so this is a heads up. Um, spoiler alert, if you don't want to see the painting, wait until the end. Um, skip forward. Um, this, but, but I'm just going to show you the painting finished to give you what is, I suppose, an idea what it's going to be like. And if you'd like to follow me along, um, you can get your stuff and follow me along, okay? So look, this is the painting here. Now, it's a robin red breast, a nice little robin in the snow. Nice little shadows, a little bit of grass with some snow, nice simple brush strokes, a little bit of dusting of snow there in the background, and a very, very simple example of painting a robin red breast. Okay, I'll zoom right in there now and show you. So there we go. So I'm going to show you now how I painted this, okay? Um, as I said, it's a time lapse, so I'll try to explain as best I can as I'm going along. I do apologise if it's not perfect. So, uh, yeah, look, just grab your stuff. If you want to follow me along, I hope you like it. Um, I will see you in a moment. Don't go anywhere. Okay, here we go. This is the drawing. Very quick sketch. I just sketched out the robin redbreast and the outline of the snow. Okay, that's all I did. And, um, you know, I'll probably change this as I'm going along anyway. I might make it bigger. I might make it a bit smaller. We'll just see how it goes. All right. Now, I'm going to put my colours up on the screen for you. I have titanium white, Naples yellow. I have some phthalo blue, some cadmium yellow pale, some cadmium red, a little magenta, and a little uh, black. I think we've a bit of burnt umber. Yeah, we've burnt umber there as well. Um, so just a very simple limited palette okay and i'm going to make the background very very um plain very simple so look i've just mixed a little phthalo blue with white and lots of turpentine so it's very very wet now it's almost like a watercolor type of consistency so very very thin um only because i want to cover lots of ground very very quickly that's all and i will probably thicken it up as i go so i'm picking up little bits of white now just to make it very bright and it's going to be very bright on one side and slightly darker on the other side, okay? Um, so just go along and keep mixing plenty of paint with plenty of turpentine. Now I've taken this tiniest little touch of magenta into that mix. <coughs> Excuse me. Just to kind of make it slightly pinker. Just a little, little hint of pink in that blue. So it's a very wintry, Christmassy sort of a blue. Um, so right along, all the way across the top. Plenty of turpentine. Now, I did prime this canvas twice. And I used a very fine sandpaper on the canvas then afterwards. Just to give it a nice smooth texture. Um, if it's still a bit dry, you can add a little linseed oil to your canvas. So just grab a tissue and give it a rub with some linseed oil. That will help the paint move around a, a little bit better as well. <coughs> so yeah, keep going. And as it comes on, I'm going to add some more white to the mix to make it nice and bright. And on the right hand side up there, I'm going to make it slightly pinker. So in a minute, I'm going to add some little hints of crimson into that just up on the right hand side. OK, but yes, um, now I'm mixing an extra little bit of blue into this Um now, I want to make it slightly darker on the left-hand side. And the only reason for this is just, it's a nice contrast. Um, going from 
dark to light or light to dark. I think rather than having the background completely just one color all the way across. Now you can do that if you like, if you want to make it easier for yourself. But I do like to make one side slightly darker. I think it just adds a bit of interest to the painting, doesn't it? Rather than just having a plain background all the way across. So what I generally do is sometimes I just pick up hints of color and I will mix them on the canvas without mixing them on my palette first. So I just pick up a little hint of blue and I put it right on the canvas and soften it right through. You know what I mean? Um, now, I'm going around the board very, very, very carefully there and I can still see my pencil lines, so not to worry. Okay, so uh, yeah, it's a lovely subject to paint. <coughs> Excuse me. It's a lovely subject to paint. I love painting robins. Um, they, they, it's just a very nice Christmassy feel to painting the robin redbreast and I could just paint these all day long I really could in fact I was thinking about doing perhaps a set of robins so for example um, I have my paintings hanging in this restaurant and there's like five big sections on the wall so it's a very very long wall and it's divided into five sections and I basically have one big painting in in middle of each section understand so what I'm thinking is Perhaps take one or two of those sections and just put five or six small paintings of robins, different types, different colours, um, just in one section, just to give customers a good choice, something to choose from. So each one will have a different kind of a colour um, for complementing their own uh, living space. So something like that, that's what I was thinking, you know. Now I mixed a little bit of green here, I took a little bit of phthalo blue and a little touch of cadmium yellow. And all that's for is just to add a touch of green into the background here and there. And look, I'm only just kind of flicking it along here and there. Then I picked up a little bit of white just to soften the note. And you see, I'm just dabbing along here and there just to give it a little hint of colour. So that Christmassy, greeny, bluey kind of a colour just in the background. And I will soften this together now with this brush. Um, I won't use any blender brush in this painting. <coughs> uh, it's absolutely fine just to leave a bit of texture on the canvas as well from time to time. You know, so um, yeah, just mess around, have a bit of fun. And I'm, I'm putting this green into this for a reason. Now, I've, I don't have a, a, a reference photograph for this painting. This is just something I thought about myself. Now, because we have some green grass on the right-hand side, I added that touch of green just on the left, just to complement the other side of the painting, and that kind of helps the composition and ties everything together as well. So that little hint of green will help, you will see. Um, okay, now... I've added a hint of crimson with Naples yellow and lots of white. Just up here on the right hand side. And I've mixed a little bit of that and I'm just kind of flicking it along, you see? And that's really just to warm the right hand side of the painting, that's all. Just again to add a little bit of warmth, a little bit of contrast. So warm against cool and it just draws the eye in. It makes a nice warm feeling for a painting, okay? Um, so it's just a very quick tutorial. I know it's not going to be very, very in-depth, but I thought, you know, when I'm painting stuff for myself even, I like to record as much as I can because I want to show you everything that I'm doing. Um, you know, I did a recent street scene, which was um, Market Lane, I think it was in Cork City, and there was a very bright kind of a glow in the centre of the painting. And I immediately got lots of requests to paint something similar. So I will do something similar, I promise. Uh, a street scene for a, for a change. Now, I took some more phthalo blue and some crimson there and just put that over on the left-hand side. Again, just darkening the left-hand side. And you see, flicking it across the bottom as well, softening it with your brush, but not making it too soft. I am leaving some of the brush strokes there. I think it's a good idea sometimes to leave some brush strokes there. Um, it gives it that bit of texture. You know what I mean. Um, so yeah, we're going well, and I will make a nice frame for this, and I I reckon it won't be hanging there long. Um, I've sold a lot of Robin Redbreasts in the restaurant recently. Um, so, you know, people just love the Robin Redbreasts, they really do. And they literally fly out the door, as the manager says to me. As soon as they're hanging, they're flying out the door, which is good. And I do sell them quite cheap, to be honest. Um, I am happy just to kind of make my... my cost of materials you know my paint for the wood for the framing um 
glue, that kind of thing, uh, timber. So I am happy just to cover the cost of that, to be quite honest with you. Because I love the fact that someone is has my painting hanging in their home. Now, I'm just making some snow. And I'm using a fan brush, you see. And I've made some very watery titanium white. Lots of turpentine on the tip of the fan brush. And just flick it onto your canvas here and there, you see. And it's just like a little peppering of snow then. So again, lots of turpentine, a little bit of white. And you can try different brushes as well. I'm going to try the larger flat one now as well. I don't think it's going to work as well as the fan brush. But let's try it anyway. So you can see me now flicking it along. And it's creating lots of tiny little peppered snow coming down. It's just nice for the background. I think it just adds to the Christmassy feel. And I will put in some um, little bits of white with my pointy brush in a moment. Uh, just to give it that impression of thick bits of snow. So there we go. Nice little peppering of snow behind the bird and um, it's really going to add to the painting I think in the end so I hope you are following me along with this it's a nice painting to try I suppose for beginners as well and amateurs um, I will show you how I make how, how I paint the robin just with simple brush strokes there's no complicated detailed work in this at all but you can by all means go further yourself and add lots of detail it's completely up to yourself I just prefer to keep it simple to be honest I think nice simple brush strokes it tells the viewer that it's in painting that somebody put brush strokes on the canvas it doesn't look like a photograph now you can see i'm taking a small pointy brush and if i remember correctly i'm going to start painting the robin now the top of the robin there it's just like naples yellow with a hint of burnt umber Okay, just for the top section of the robin. Ah, I'm doing the grass first, you see. I didn't remember now if I was after doing the grass first or the robin first. Okay, so a little bit of cadmium yellow pale and some phthalo blue with a touch of black. And just lots of turpentine and flick it up, okay. And I suppose the only advice I can give you with doing stuff like this is um, I try to avoid putting subjects like this in even numbers so don't just go along and put two here two there and two there i can split up the numbers into odd numbers so three or five do you understand um it just makes it more natural i find i don't know why i i see a lot of people painting something like this and they might put four blades of grass exactly the same size right across the painting and it just looks too even and um it just doesn't look natural do you understand so try and vary your brush strokes and the amount of subject that's in it so perhaps even one clump of six or seven blades of grass rather than just putting one clump of two do you understand now i've added a little bit of white into it just for the background ones there you see just to make them a little bit softer and i will add little touches of snow onto this as well um, just to give the impression of little hints of snow resting on the blades of grass. I think it's just nice for a snow scene anyway. So, a little bit of light, a little bit of yellow I added to this. Just to give it a little bit of lighter green here and there. There we go. And look, it's just a simple scene. I'm not going it into loads of complicated detail i just want to keep it subtle i'm more kind of focusing really on the robin redbreast in the painting um the blades of grass are there just to kind of balance out the painting so it's not just a robin redbreast on its own now i've taken a nice cup of coffee there a nice cappuccino i am partial to a cappuccino every now and again believe it or not you know um i do drink tea most of the time but i do love a nice cappuccino every now and then what do you think so let's continue on um i think i'm doing the blades of grass up on the right here now no i'm not i'm going for the snow okay so i've just taken lots of white with a hint of blue and a bit of turpentine and i'm just putting in all of this snow under on, on the bottom here just i'm focusing really on covering the canvas as much as i can and you can see me going in under the blades of grass 
I don't worry if you pick up a hint of the green from the blaze of grass, okay? That's absolutely fine. That will help the painting. It will help the composition, okay? Because you will get a hint of a reflection from the green grass, um, you know, from the reflection down onto the snow. So you will get a hint of it, just a hint. So it's absolutely fine if you pick up a little bit. Now, it's going to get darker again down at the bottom. So I've added a little bit more blue, just stale blue on its own. And I may have added a touch of magenta, just so that it's not really, really blue, but a warm blue. Now you can see me flicking the brush over to the right, you see, and that's separating those two sections of snow on the ground. Do you understand what I mean? And I'm going to get some white there now in a moment, and I'm going to put some nice indications of a white fluff kind of a snow on the canvas. So I'm just kind of covering it now at the moment, getting the canvas covered. That's all I'm doing. Now here we go. Flat brush, pick up lots of white. Okay, nice thick white because we have already a base color on our canvas, so no turpentine. And you can see I'm flicking it up with a slight curve. And that's giving the direction of the ground as well, you see. So I'm going up at an angle. Now I'm doing the same over on the other side. So it's kind of dipping down and they're both meeting down in the center then, you see. So just experiment with your brush. There we go, lots of thick white here and there. And there's no particular technique for this. I'm just kind of dotting on thick white paint here and there to create sort of layers, different types of layers of snow. And again, it's just an impression, okay? I like to just keep it simple. So it's a lot of fun painting stuff like this. I do love painting these types of scenes because you can just make it whatever you like. You can add whatever you like into it. Um, you could even add some red berries on the ground or something. That would be nice also, wouldn't it? Some nice little red berries, perhaps even one or two branches coming in from the top as well with some snow on the branches. That would be lovely too. So just play around with your imagination and try different things. If you find this too much, you could just leave it white. Okay? You don't have to go to all the trouble that I'm doing here. You can just leave it white all the way along the bottom and add some blades of grass. Okay? Just make it your own and have fun. The most important thing is to have fun when painting. That's what I find. Now, little touches of white on your pointy brush and just run them along the blades of grass here and there. And it's kind of a hit and miss, you see? Dot, dot, dot. Hit and miss. And those simple brush strokes now really bring the blades of grass to life, don't they? Adding... Hints of snow to the grass. It really, really is lovely. So, thank you anyway for following me, if you are my followers. Uh, thank you so much. I really do appreciate all the lovely comments that I get. Um, you know, it really makes it worth it for me to know that you're getting some um, hints and tips from my painting. Okay, I know I could go into a lot more detail with some paintings, but... I think I I can I just like to keep it easy to understand for the majority of people out there because I know there's a lot of amateurs and beginners out there who just cannot find any kind of artists who just take their time and explain in simple terms what they're doing. I just like to keep it simple for beginners, particularly beginners, because I was a beginner once too and I found it very difficult to find a channel on YouTube which just gave simple honest advice and didn't make things too complicated and didn't use very fancy terms and all this kind of stuff so look i'm just putting a bit of shadow under the bird here just took a mix of phthalo blue a little crimson and a touch of black so it's just a very dark bluey gray basically and i softened it in just under the bird and to the left now we've zoomed in so i presume it's going to be time to tackle this robin redbreast Okay, now um, I've taken a small flat brush, your medium stubby will do absolutely fine for this, and I'm going to do a mix of, uh, if I remember correctly, burnt umber with a hint of Naples yellow, and I'm just going to go around the top of the board with that, and remember if you're having trouble with um, straight lines, lean down hard on the brush, that's all you have to do. Burnt umber, a little Naples yellow. And as it comes down, look, I've added a hint of black 
I'm just picking up colours now from the palette and putting them directly onto the canvas, you see. So a hint of black and I've taken a hint of Naples yellow as well with that black. So it's just a softer kind of a grey. Now Naples yellow with black makes a beautiful, soft, warm kind of a grey. You should try it sometime. I always have Naples yellow on my palette for every single painting. Now there I have picked up a little bit of Naples yellow, you see? And I'm mixing it together on the canvas. And I'm pulling the brush strokes down in the same direction all the time. So that's following the feathers of the birds then, you see? And it's telling you which way the feathers are going as well. So that's why I love using flat brushes like this. You can use a little pointy brush if it makes life easier for you, by all means. Um, I'm just used to using these lovely flat tipped brushes. So there you go. Bring that nice warm grey now all the way down. And it's mixing with the brown, it's mixing with the black. And it's creating lots of different shades, you see. And that's the, wonder, that's the wonderful thing about oils. You can mix them on the canvas without worrying about the paint drying too quickly. Now, um, let me see. Now, what's, what are we going to do next? Um, okay, we have a lovely rich orange around by the eyes and the front of the robin red breast. I can't remember if I'm mixing that yet. No, I'm not. I've mixed a little blue. So, a little bit of thalo blue with, some, with a hint of brown, I think it was. And I'm just creating this bluey grey colour down at the bottom of the robin. All right. And the feathers down at the bottom of the robin are very sort of ruffled. It's a very sort of ruffled kind of a look. So I'm just kind of flicking the brush in lots of different directions. Now I've added a bit more thalo blue, you see that? And that just creates a more natural shadow under the bird. Which is wonderful. And it just gives it a much more realistic look, I think. So you can see now the colour of the bottom of the bird and the colour on the snow are almost identical, aren't they? And that's what kind of brings the painting together. Now I picked up a little hint of Naples yellow, you see? But I did clean my brush first. And I picked up a hint of Naples yellow. And I'm softening that Naples yellow then into the blue and into the black and the grey. So everything is sort of merging together as one. And you can see me just flicking my brush up and down, up and down. At that angle. And that shows you the, the, the direction of the feathers coming down on the back of the bird. So, a little bit of burnt umber, just for the tail. Look, a little bit of flick. Flick it out, flick it in. And that's the bird's tail done. Now, I may make it a little bit thicker on the end. A little bit wider, you see? Just like that. And then we have the side of the wing coming out just a little bit and flicking in. There, you see? Now I will add some detail for the wing just to separate the, the wing from the rest of the bird. Um, I'm just putting a little bit of black and flicking some black up, you see, with the tip of my brush, the tip of my flat brush, flicking it up. Isn't the one the colours are wonderful, aren't they? All the colours kind of complement each other, I think. Now, there we go, just getting the edge of the wing. And you can play around with this as well yourself. Look, you can you can find your own photographs of a nice robin, but just use simple techniques like this. Now, by the way, I just thought I should mention as well, um, I do have a Patreon page. If anyone... Now, I don't have any links on my videos yet to my Patreon page uh, because I had to start my new channel all over again. And, um, you know, I had to get up to so many subscribers before I could add links. So... Just so you know, I do have a Patreon page, and it's just a place for you to go if you wish to support me. That's all it is. And there are lots of extra tutorials um, which I put up there, which are not available on YouTube, but you can go and see them on Patreon if you wish. It's just, just to say thank you, you know what I mean, um, for all your support. Uh, you can just pledge like one euro a month, or you can pledge two or three euros per month or whatever, and you can stop it whatever you like, any time at all. It's just there for you to help me uh, go along and move along and buy materials, just to keep going with these tutorials, all right? That's the purpose of the page, really, just so you can support me along. Um, I really do appreciate it. You're very, very kind. 
and uh, again thank you so much to all my patrons already i will have another one uploaded for patreon very very soon if you have any requests and you are a patron please do ask okay don't be shy i'll be happy to paint whatever you you would like me to paint just ask it's the least i could do anyway look um so go and check it out if you want if you don't it's absolutely fine Thank you anyway for, subs for subscribing to me and watching my videos. I hope you get something from them. So I mixed a little bit of cadmium yellow with some cadmium red and a little touch of white. And I put in this lovely kind of orange and I'm softening it in to that kind of bluey grey colour as well. Just a little, as you can see. So it's not just a completely solid line, alright? And I'm going to add some lighter colour to the front of this orange just to show that the light is kind of catching on one side now i've taken a bit of white and i'm going to create a little white under the robin red breast hair you see i'm just wiggling my brush and i'm softening it sort of up into the orange slightly and down into the blue so it's going to sort sort of merge together very very slightly there we go you see so following the curve of the robin, you see what I mean? I'm following the curve. My brush strokes are following that direction. There we go. Softening everything in nicely together. Now I do have a reference photograph of the robin on my phone next to me, which I'm just kind of looking at here and there. But it's only just a little bit. Um, you know, I don't look at reference photographs too much. I just kind of take the general sketching of them and I just kind of add my own colours most of the time. Now, if it's a request, obviously, sometimes I will try and copy the painting as much as I can or the photograph. But most of the time, I do kind of like to add my own colour to it. Now, I've just taken a little touch of yellow on my brush, okay? Cadmium yellow. And I've mixed it on the canvas. So I'm softening the yellow into that orange. Just to create a light hitting the bird. Next I'm taking a pointy brush. Nice pointy brush. And I'm going to just add some little hints of white feathers. Just here and there. So a couple of tiny little flicks. So a nice small pointy brush for this. And just add some nice tiny little flicks of white paint here and there. You see? very sort of ruffled kind of a looking bird little curves and just go along it's just I suppose it's just to add a little hint of detail on the feathers here and there that's all most of most of all most importantly just have fun okay have fun with your painting and don't make it too serious, all right? Try not to be too serious about your painting. It's supposed to be fun. You're supposed to be learning all of the time. Um, every single painting I do, I learn. I learn something about a particular brush stroke or a particular color or how a particular color is mixed. That's why I love painting. Even if I don't sell anything, I will still paint. I will still paint and put up tutorials every single week um, because I just love doing it. It's not about selling for me. I have lots. I have a studio now with about 60 or 70 paintings just inside boxes against the wall. And there are, some of them are three or four years old. They just haven't been sold. But I don't care because I enjoy painting them. You know what I mean? It's not about selling. It is nice to sell, obviously, uh, to pay for materials. But the fact that I have Patreon and they support me in a huge way that allows me to buy materials every week so i can keep uploading videos do you understand so that's why i'm able to do this for all of you it's it's great to be able to do it i would probably struggle if i didn't have patreon um to buy materials every week and upload every week if i'm not selling paintings it would be difficult so that's why patreon is so important um it allows me to keep going basically so I do appreciate all of your help. So thank you very much for your help. Okay, enough of me blithering on. Um, we're going along here and I'm adding little touches of brown. Little 
touches of burnt umber and I'm just putting little flicks here and there on the robin. And you can see where I picked out the wing with my little hint of Naples yellow. A couple of little quick lines just here and there. Just to pick out the shape of the wing, that's all. Um, now, the same with the orange. Look, I've added a little bit of more orange, just flicking it through. It's just to add a bit of texture to the bird, really, that's all. Um, so it just doesn't look completely flat on the canvas. Now, time for the beak. So a little bit of black, nice tin paint. And take your time with this now. Don't overdo it, okay? Start off small. You can always make it bigger if you wish. So a nice small little beak. If you find it's too small, you can always make it a little bigger. But if it's too big, it's very difficult then to take the paint back off. So that's probably all right. Yeah, that's not bad, I think. Now let's go with the eye. Little circle for the eye. Nice and carefully, take your time. Perfect. And around that eye now, there's a little bit of light catching around the eye. I suppose it just helps give it that little bit of three-dimensional look without being just completely flat on the canvas. So a little bit of light with Naples yellow just around the edge of that eye there, okay, see? Now that may be a bit bright, I know, but I will kind of soften it back into the orange just slightly with the tip of my brush, just to take the harshness out of it, okay? little dot in the centre of the eye just to give a hint of reflection from the light and I may put a hint across the top of the beak as well in a moment um, just to show some of the light hitting the top of the beak because if, if you have a very strong shadow just, just try and think about this okay if you have a very strong shadow on the floor whether it be a field or a footpath or snow if you have a very strong shadow like this, there has to be a point of light. So wherever there's a point of light, you're going to have light catching an object. So for instance, the light on the tip of the beak. Okay, the little bit of snow on the tips of the grass. So that's all catching the light and it's casting a little shadow. So it's very important to have light and shadow in a painting like this because that's what brings it to light. All right, just try to remember that. Um, I see a lot of paintings People send me a lot of paintings to give advice on and just to review. And I noticed that there's just very little shadow in some of the paintings. So there might be a lot going on, lots of trees, etc. But very little shadow and very little highlight. The most important thing to remember is add plenty of shadow to a painting, especially a landscape, okay? And it will really, really bring it to life. You won't believe how easy it is to do, but it makes a huge difference. So just always add plenty of shadow into your paintings. And it really does bring them to life. Now, a little bit of a leg here, a little bit of burnt on with black. Just coming down at a slight angle. And I'm going to kind of soften where they meet the board. I'm going to soften it then with my little fingertip. Just soften it into the feathers. Okay, it just helps. Just like that, you see? Just dab, 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 very gently. And it just softens it into the board. Just give it a more natural look, you see? And I'm then going to add some light to one side of these. So the light is hitting them, you see? A little bit of Naples yellow. Just a hint here and there. And I'm not going to put claws on the end of the feet because they're in snow. So I'm going to add a little bit of snow then just across the front of the legs you see just with my fan brush a little bit of thick white paint and dab it and flick it upwards here and there that just creates some nice kind of rough snow doesn't it on the ground and again it gives more texture it really does help with the texture so just go along here and there and add that bit of snow so that's the robin finished really wasn't that easy i just kept just keep it nice and simple um Okay, nice simple brush strokes. Do not try not to overthink your painting. That's the most important part. So go along, add bits of snow with your brush, dab dab dab. It just makes a more interesting painting to look at, that's all, isn't it? That's all it is. So I hope you've enjoyed it. It's been a lot of fun. 
and I will have a couple more like these nice short tutorials um, perhaps different subjects you know um, I've just added a couple of little blades of grass here and there just with some dark green again nice and simple there we go and again just a little dab of white snow just under those just to sit them on the ground you see so that they sort of they're growing out of something and they're not just kind of floating in midair you see what I mean it does help um, so yes I would love to see how you're getting on with this and uh, please do send me your pictures for review or even just some advice I like to think that I can give decent advice from time to time it is a pleasure it really really is and um, yeah I'm going to be running a couple of competitions now as well with Christmas coming up we'll have some giveaways perhaps uh, a paint perhaps give away a nice tutorial painting and um, you know a few sets of brushes that kind of thing um, something from Ireland as well thrown in let's call it like a bumper pack should we call it a bumper pack for a prize so there'll be lots of different bits and pieces um, to do with painting and to do with um, the place I come from that kind of thing how about that any suggestions just let me know something nice now for a competition the easy part is giving it away the tricky part for me the difficult part is how I run the competition and how do I pick a name from so many subscribers and so many viewers um, you know it's kind of impractical really to write every single name down isn't it that would take a long time wouldn't it so um, you know if you have any ideas do share with me please and um, I'll get a competition up and running giveaway painting with some brushes and perhaps even some paints that kind of thing for Christmas what do you think let me know if you have any suggestions I would appreciate your help with this because I'm not very good with these online giveaways that kind of thing you know it's just that my my area of expertise we'll say so please do help I need your help any ideas you have just tell me and uh, we'll, we'll crack on and we get a nice competition going yes so you can see I just added a couple of extra blades of grass up on the right hand side the same as before some black some yellow a hint of blue uh, lots of turpentine and just a couple of flicks so it's coming into the painting you see I'm carving them into the painting and that is drawing your eye in all right if you have them going the opposite way out of the painting it kind of forces your eyes out to one side of the canvas and off of the canvas so always have something like this whether it's a tree or a branch or something coming into the painting that will really really help that's just something I learned along the way as well um, you know your mind kind of unconsciously goes inwards to the painting when something is leading in like a footpath or something you don't even re realize it's happening but it is um, okay so a little bit of snow on these little blades of grass just here and there again just adds to the atmosphere doesn't it a nice Christmassy robin and this one is for sale very very cheap um, I'll frame it it's 16 inches by 20 inches so a decent size with a nice big white frame and that'll make a wonderful Christmas present for someone I think so it is for sale very very cheap if you're interested do let me know um, okay I'm gonna put some flicks of snow up on the left hand side so I'm just gonna zoom back now slightly so you can see what I'm doing and there's a lovely bowl of fruit on the right hand side look we could do a painting of that sometime um, so some just bits of white I'm suggesting some snowflakes you see just dab 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 here and there a couple of little clumps just around on the canvas big ones small ones uh, I suppose the trick here is not to overdo the snow because you might just ruin the painting completely and cover it completely with snow I just think a hint of it here and there is nice perhaps just coming in from one corner I'm just being careful now I don't want to do too much of this just a little bit here and there I 
So thank you so much for following me along. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, it's a nice warm painting. I suppose the thing with robins is the orange of the robin redbreast really complements the cool background. I think that's what does it for me and it's really an eye catcher. So when this is framed up on the wall, this will really catch your eye, I think. And um, I'm gonna go out and hang this in the restaurant and uh, see how it looks. I'm very, very happy with this now so far. Okay, time to sign. Remember, the painting is not finished until it's signed. S. Conway. And you could own your very own original Stephen Conway painting. Just let me know if you're interested, okay? Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you so much for, uh, for watching. Let's zoom in now and take a quick look at what we have painted. Look, isn't that wonderful? A little robin redbreast standing in the snow. Do keep it simple. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you so much again for your support. Uh, you've been very, very kind to me. I really, it's, it's, it's a privilege and an honor to paint for you. It really, really is. The fact that I'm sharing my gift with other people and showing them how to kind of progress along, it just means everything to me. It's a really great pleasure, pleasure okay? So thank you very much. I will see you very, very soon with another tutorial. God bless.